Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a Time Lord deck profile. And for you guys who are fans of Doctor Who, this kind of is a pun on Doctor Who. It was actually the main villain of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Uh, his archetype, his name was Zone, if you guys don't know that. But it's a really interesting deck that if your opponent doesn't know how to, you know, read the cards, it's really going to take your opponent by uh, surprise. So it's a really fun deck, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell in there so you can become part of Notification Squad, and let's get straight into this. Fun fact about Time Lords, really quickly, you actually don't even really need an extra deck to play them. I just kind of threw together an extra deck. It's one of those decks that... um. You just, you don't need it because they do everything that they need to do just in the main deck. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of um, Sedion, the Time Lord. Basically, he's the big 4K beat stick. All the Time Lords share the effect of that they shuffle themselves back into the deck um, during your next standby phase. And you can only control one copy of them at a time, which is kind of pretty cool. They all have kind of like a floodgate effect as well which is really, really, really interesting. I absolutely love them. Um, but basically, this one's effect is if your opponent controls a monster and you can normal summon this card without tributing, all of them share that ability as well. And then um, it cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects, and neither player takes any battle damage from battles involving this one. And then at the end of the battle phase, if this card battle inflict 2,000 points of damage to your opponent's life points. It ties in with the next one that we play very well because it has that burn effect. This deck does a lot of burn effects, which is kind of funny. Um, so the next one that we play is Mikeon, the Time Lord. Mikeon's effect is that basically if he's involved in a battle, you half your opponent's life points at the end of the battle phase, which is pretty cool. Um, and they also, like I said, once per turn during either player, during your standby phase, shuffle them back into the deck. So they can get their effects off multiple times. If you battle with them once, and then your opponent attacks into them if they don't know what they do. Um, then we play two copies of Zafion, the Time Lord. This one also, this one's really interesting. This one shuffles all the spells and traps that your opponent controls back into the deck. Um, and if it's sent, this one's a little unique. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can draw one card. And then once per turn, during your standby phase, shuffle this card into the deck. So if this one's the only one that if it's sent to the graveyard, you get to draw an additional card, which is pretty cool. Then I play uh, two copies of Medion, the Time Lord. Um, this was actually the first one I believe that they ever released uh, back in Photon Shockwave. Um, but you can normal summon this card without tributing. And then it, if it attacks, a, um, if this card is a attack is involved in a battle at the end of the battle phase if this card battled return as many monsters on the field as possible to the hand um other than this card and if you do inflict 300 points of damage to your opponent for each one that's returned which is pretty cool then i play uh three copies of lazy or two copies of lazion this one's another one that burns your opponent a little bit um, but its effect is is at the end of the battle phase if this card battled shuffle all cards in your opponent's graveyard into the deck and then once per turn, if this card, if your opponent draws a card, inflict a thousand points of damage to your opponent. So you just put this card on the field and let your opponent, you know, swing at it if they want to. But they can't be destroyed by battle. So they're really hard to out. Like your opponent has to out them and you just keep summoning them on your turn. Like it's it's really easy to just put a board of like two or three of these on the field in this deck and just look at your opponent and be like, okay, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about this? Um, then I play two copies of Raphion. Um, the Time Lord, it cannot be, um, it has the effect of, at the end of the battle phase, if this card battle inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of one monster your opponent controls that battled this card. So, like, if your opponent has, like, a really big, like, let's just say they have a really big Boral Savage dragon on the field, and it has, like, I don't know, what's the standard, like, 48 for Boral Savage, something like that, 44, you can attack the Boral Savage, and if they've already negated something with the Boral Savage, they're going to lose 4,400. Then... If you have Seti on and you attack them with that, they're gonna lose 2k. And then if you had Mikey on, they're gonna or they're gonna have their life once first. And then these two alone, if they have a 4k beat stick on the field, can end the duel. Just these two on the field at once. Um, then for the last monster that I play is three copies of Time Maiden. Um, Time Maiden is interesting. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if this card, this card can be treated as two tributes for the normal summon of a Time Lord monster, um, and you can tribute this card to add a Time Lord monster with zero attack from your deck to your hand. You can manage this card from your grave to special summon Time Lord with zero attack from your deck, ignoring his summoning conditions, and you cannot special summon monsters the turn you activate this card. Um, which is not a big deal, because we're not going to be special summoning all that much in this deck anyways. So, 
that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. I know not a lot of monsters, but it's enough that we, we can normal summon what we need to do, and then they shuffle themselves back into the deck, and they just keep recycling and recycling and recycling. So let me play one copy of One for One to summon the Time Maiden. Uh, one copy of Monster Reborn, just to bring back what we need to bring back. Foolish Burial to send Time Maidens to Grave, you know, so we can keep playing. Um, three Pot of Duality. We don't... I'm not really worried about special summoning in this deck, so I just play Pot of Duality. Um, you could even, if you wanted to, play Pot of Extravagance, but I tried to make this pretty budget. But you could play a Pot of Extravagance if you wanted to. Um, but I feel like Pot of Duality does enough, because if I can just have one Time Lord in my hand, I'm okay for the turn. They're not... Usually, my opponent cannot out a Time Lord. Usually. So, then I play three copies of Called by the Grave. Called by the Grave just um, lets them, me do my combos without being interrupted. Uh, three copies of Card Advance. Um, you get to target, you get to tribute a level 8 or higher monster you control and then draw two cards. All the Time Lords are level 10, so, you know, they all fall into that requirement. You just normal summon one and then, you know, pop it. Uh, three copies of Celestial Transformation. This card is really funny to pop on your opponent's turn. You special summon a fairy monster from your hand, and then monsters, that monster's attack is half, but half of zero is still zero, so we don't really care. Um, and then destroy it during the end phase. That's not that big of a deal. I'll just bring it back some way. Um, but it really, like, if you don't have, if you can't summon them all and they out one, you set this and then flip it before they do all their big plays. Before they put negations on board. And then it's like, okay, deal with it now. So, that's it for the spells, guys. I know, not a lot of spells in this deck. We play actually play a couple of traps in this deck. So, that's it for the spells. So, for the traps, it's really interesting, the traps. So, we play three copies of um, Torrential Tribute. Now, there is a good reason for us playing Torrential Tribute in this deck. Because all the Time Lords share the ability of... Um, it cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects... You normal summon a Time Lord on your turn after your opponents build up a big board. You flip Torrential. Like, you set it on turn one and you flip Torrential. Or, you summon a Time Lord on your side of the field. You set Torrential. And then your opponent normal summons something or gets a big board. And you know their extension of how far they go in their combo. And you interrupt them with a Torrential. Or double Torrential if they can't handle it. And you draw multiple copies of it. Which is just amazing to be able to just Torrential them multiple times. Um, then we play three copies of Empty Machine. Um, Empty Machine is kind of like the Time Lord specific trap card. Um, the first time a face-up card would leave the field or be destroyed. Um, the first time the first time this card would, leave, would be destroyed by battle. Opponent's card effect. Um, it is not destroyed, which is pretty cool. And then you can discard a card to add to draw or level ten monster to draw a card. And then if this card is the only card in your spell and trap card zone, target a Time Lord monster in your grave and shuffle it into the deck. Then you can set one Infinite Machine, which this is Infinite Machine. Infinite Machine, um, you can you have to send a empty machine from your side of the field to the grave to activate it. And then once per turn, this face-up card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. And then during your main phase, you can special summon a Time Lord monster in your hand. And then you can target a Time Lord monster in your grave and shuffle it into the deck. And if you do, set one Infinite Light directly from your deck. Infinite Light. Um, activate this card by sending one Infinite Machine from your Spell and Trap card zone to the grave, and then this card cannot be destroyed by an opponent's card effects. Neither player can target Time Lord monsters you control with card effects, or return Time Lords from the field into the deck. Once you establish Infinite Machine, you've pretty much won. Um, and then once per turn, if you control no monsters, you can special summon up to one Time Lord uh, monster from your hand deck or grave with different names, ignoring their summoning conditions. So you summon one from your hand, one from your deck, and one from your graveyard with uh, infinite light, which is just amazing. You summon three of them. Once you do this, you're going to summon Raphion, Mikeon, and Sadion, and then you're going to win. I mean, you've won at that point. You, your opponent cannot out all three of those. Um, so that's it for the main deck, guys. I'll show you the extra deck. It's not a lot in the extra deck, so I'll just show you that. I mean, it's a full 15-card extra deck, and it's just suggestions. So we play two copies of um, Juggernaut Libby. You can make Juggernaut Libby extremely easily in this deck and be able to attack a lot with this card just by playing the standard um, Real Cannon Gustav Max if you need some extra damage. The Super Doras, just in case you need a monster that's unaffected by anything. 
and the Sky Palace um, Gandarla or whatever it is. I don't make this that often, but it's here because it's a rank 10. And then I play Optimus Prime as well because it's just kind of there and it's 5k in case I need it, in case I don't ha can't handle something with 4k. Um, then I play the Spider Engine, which is 7 Sins, uh, Pain Gainer, Ravenous Tarantula. I play two of those because they gain attack points equal to the difference in my opponent's life points and my life points. So if I can put two Time Lords on the field, make this, and my opponent's got, let's just say, 2,000 life points left, and I'm still at 8,000 because they haven't been reading my Time Lords and I've been burning them. Um, all my monsters gain 6,000 attack. All my Time Lords are at 6k. I mean, that that's crazy. Um, and then I play Nightmare Phoenix just to pop spells and traps that I need to. Cerberus to pop monsters that I can't handle. And then Link Rebo because of Time Maiden. So that's it. That's it for the deck profile, guys. I hope you enjoyed this deck. It's a super fun deck. It's pretty budget as well. Um, you can make it a little bit more expensive if you want to by putting like Pot of Extravagance in here. You could even put like Pot of Desires, Pot of Extravagance, and Pot of Duality all in here. I wouldn't recommend that, but you could if you wanted to and focus more on like summoning Mikey on, Raphion, and uh, Sandion. Those are the best three of them, but it's just a suggestion. But I, I like it the way I built it because it's budget, it's fun, and it does exactly what I need it to do. And it, it makes people rage quit. Like, it seriously does make people rage quit. So anyways, guys, this is Darkroom Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit the bell so you can come part of the notification squad. See you around, guys.